Hello and welcome to Hysteria. I'm Erin Ryan. And I'm Alyssa Mastromonaco. Alyssa, can I tell you something that confuses me in a way that, you, you know, like when you're in a train and the train next to you starts moving and you're like, whoa. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, it is hearing the NBC Nightly News election theme song on an off-year election. Erin, they need new music. I could they need not new agree music. with you more. Everybody does. Everybody does. Everybody needs new music. I hear it and I'm like, wait, is it November? Do I need to get my Christmas list ready? Like, what's going on? And no, then it takes everybody me a couple needs seconds. new music. I, I, we need some, we need off-year election music and then like presidential year election music. Music. Yes, which should be very sweeping and interesting and important. And other than that, it should just be like low key melody. That's it. <laughs> it yeah, totally. I mean, it's stressful regardless. And I hear bum 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 bum, and I'm like, no, mm -mm -mm -mm. no, I can't. I'm like, do it. oh my god, is Barack Obama president again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alyssa, the news this week was like good, acceptable. <laughs> Pretty good. I mean, there were there were obviously bad things that were happening in Tennessee uh, with the lawmakers being expelled from the state legislative house. That's bad. But we're focusing on stuff that is good and good. bodes well long term. Uh, well, of course, we're going to talk about uh, that former the Florida guy, the guy who um, him, the golfing man, him, the orange um, guy, the or yeah. I mean, he's you know he's depends on the light. You know, we'll call him man who throws hamburger against a wall and leaves yeah, bloody ketchup wall. stain. <laughs> the ham burglar. Um, so we'll talk about him and his arraignment. But I think you and I are in agreement here that all of the important shit goes down at the state and local level. Yep. Like all of the important shit goes down at the state and local level. And Donald Trump being indicted kind of sucked a lot of the oxygen out of the room this week, and I think there's a lot more to talk about. Let's get started with Wisconsin. The Badger State? America's Dairyland? Holy shit. Wisconsin did it. Wisconsin voters did it. They elected Judge Janet Protosewitz to state Supreme Court on Tuesday in what actually turned out to be a fairly comfortable margin of victory. Yes. So exciting. Uh, did you listen to Dan Kelly's concession speech? No, I did not. <laughs> it was so, so sour grapes. It was just bitter, bitter, bitter. He he was saying that he's he, this isn't going to bode well. This is a guy that was flying around on, a, on an abortion, uh, like an anti-abortion group's private plane in the week before the election. Uh, what do you make of Protosewitz's like resounding win? What do you think? Oh. Wh what does this mean to Wisconsinites? Aaron, Wisconsinites and America, honestly. Um, I mean, Wisconsin has been mired down for like the last 15 or so years with just GOP pandemonium, um, gerrymandering hanging in the balance, abortion rights hanging in the balance. This is such good and exciting news. And Aaron, I was so nervous. You were a little bit more rosy about this. I was so nervous. Like the Trump Biden margin was so razor thin uh, back in 2020. There was no uh, there was no reason to believe that she would kill. She killed yesterday. She she killed. And you know, you know, Martha McSally was the original person to get two L's after being appointed by a Republican yeah. governor, right? Yes. Dan Kelly got his second L last night, too, at the hands of of a woman. I want to also bring up the fact that, you know, to paraphrase a Rebecca Traster headline from New York Magazine. I was Magazine, just going to Traster it. Yes. Abortion wins elections. It does. Abortion wins elections. And we need to stop treating it like a fringe issue and or a side issue. And it, people it need to stop ignoring us. We have been saying this. Traster's on the cover of, of a magazine saying it. Kansas told us this back in August, that it was not just something that wins election. It was motivating people out to the polls. And Aaron, mm -hmm. I feel like it is the essence of fuck around and find out. Like mm -hmm. people have thought for a long time, Oh, the people who say that this uh, this Rose stuff, that this is going to be catastrophic. They're just being hysterical. Well, nope. It all started to happen. And now people see that and they're like, mm, everyone's gone. to th This has gone too far. And now they're coming out to vote. And this was so – it was such excellent news to get mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. and, and now we're at a point when every election is a referendum on abortion, yep. every single one. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are expressly abortion-related referendums that have – come up for voters to decide in various states. I think they're still 
no pro, no anti-abortion referendums have won. It's all been pro-abortion access that has won. Um, you can't say that a state Supreme Court race is necessarily on paper a referendum on abortion, but in practice it is. Judge Protasiewicz was really open about the fact that her personal beliefs are that women should have the freedom to choose what to do with their bodies without government interference. And Dan Kelly pretended that he didn't believe what he actually believes. Right. Um, and voters, like, you know, they can smell the bullshit. It's, you know, it's a, it's an agricultural state. They know what bullshit smells like. But this is like you and I have been saying local, local, local for years now. And I mean, Aaron, even in a local election, this Supreme Court court race cost $49 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. It is it is incredible. And it is kind of a little example of Republicans in Wisconsin being uh, hoisted by their own petard in yes. a way, um, because they were the ones that made it so that state parties could contribute unlimited amounts to campaigns yep. within the state, which means that people could donate like a million dollars to the state Democratic Party in Wisconsin. Some person from, you know, American Samoa or California or Washington or whatever can just be like, here's a million dollars. And then the state party could just be like, here you go, Janet. Here you right. have the million dollars. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah. And that was a Republican. That was a Republican joint. So great job, guys. Uh, these things do tend to backfire. Um, I also want to give a shout out to our pal Samuel Alito, who said um, around the time of the Dobbs, I don't know if it was in the Dobbs decision or not, but that women, if they want abortion rights, they can simply vote for them. And they are. They are. Thanks, Sam. They are. <laughs> Thank you, Sam, for that that little tip. Uh, we're going to stick to it. Uh, we're going to we're going to keep doing it. Really exciting stuff. Um, also, Chicago. Shout out to Chicago. Yes. Shout out to Chicago. Brandon Johnson. Um, you know, and I will say this. He his uh, acceptance speech last night was so gracious. The first thing that I want to say is to the Chicagoans who did not vote for me. Here's what I want you to know. Here's what I want you to know. That I care about you. I value you. And I want to hear from you. He is reaching across the aisle. He, there was such bad faith uh, campaigning against him, saying that he was defund the police, when really Chicago has more police per capita, Aaron, than L.A. or New York City. Um, and it's not getting the job done. And so his whole campaign platform was, let's just get the money in the hands of the people who can actually help, like mental health professionals. So, uh, but he reached out uh, to the police last night in his speech. And I really, it's a big job. It's a hard job. And I mean, God bless. We wish him the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being mayor of Chicago is sort of like being manager of the Cubs. Except people get way madder at you and there's like way more stakes. Um, but an equal number of people are drunk at all times when they watch you. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Oh, I want to make one more note about Wisconsin. This is how worried Republicans should be about the fuck around found, find out season. Um, this is hyper granular and hyper local. But there is a district. There was a special election last night in Wisconsin for oh. a legislative seat that yep. was in a county that is extremely lopsidedly red normally. The Republican candidate won by a minuscule margin, like a minuscule margin. So, you know, I um, it's it's a shame that the Democratic candidate couldn't pull it out, but nobody thought that I mean, the Democratic candidate would win. We'll take a slim margin. <laughs> yeah. If Republicans should be scared. They yes. should be very scared because the energy is on our side and uh, we're going to keep the energy up until we get through next year's presidential election. And then I'm going to die. <laughs> um, OK, let's talk a little bit. Oh, let's I guess we can talk about Donald Trump. Oh. What do you make of all the stuff? Aaron, I have to be honest. I was pretty bored by it. Um, Interesting. I was I mean, <laughs> because the, all of the all of the like you know pompacity of that's the cable thing. news punditry. Here's my problem, Aaron. I look we we the the surprise in all of this was kind of when they said they were going to bring down an indictment a month earlier. They said originally that the grand jury was going to take the whole month off, and they didn't. That was like, oh, I wonder what's happening. And I think because of that, I thought to myself, it must be big. 
They must have something big. And my husband the whole time, he's like, I don't know. I don't know. And I was like, no, no, no. Trust me. They must have something big. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, when you read the written instructions, it didn't sound super big. Now, look, is it a huge and historic deal that a president of the United States has been indicted? Absolutely. And should someone who has committed crimes pay for those crimes? Absolutely. But the virtual cable terrorism that we had to endure yesterday of watching. Okay, first, the man's not O.J. Simpson. Let's stop with the helicopters overhead, like following him from airport to Trump Tower down to the courthouse. But also, <laughs> I can't. And the, in order to watch it, you know, maybe years ago, you could have gotten most of your news from Twitter and it wouldn't have been as annoying. But like, we can't do that anymore, really. So I did have on cable news. And I can't with the – I don't know. It's like the, it's like these old Trump people, they think they've been deloused or something. They're like, <laughs> see, we're clean, all right? For three months, we said he was a bad guy and that he was going to get in trouble and that he would deserve it. But now he's not in trouble and he's actually got a little bit of momentum prior to the terrible speech he gave. But he's got a little bit of momentum. So we're going to calibrate what we say tonight between 6 and 8 p.m. when everybody's watching. And it is repulsive that these people – Fine with the Muslim ban, fine with every terrible thing he did. Then he leaves and they're like, I don't know, maybe he was morally bankrupt. And mm -hmm. so I found it all just uh, – it was all just a hair too far on all sides yesterday. <sighs> just the punditry cringe was very yeah. strong where it just felt like I was watching a bunch of people audition to be included in clips of historical totally. events. Of roundups. <laughs> God, guys, come on. Other things are happening. And I get that this gets eyeballs. I get that people cannot stop either hate watching or love watching Donald Trump. I get that. But it's also like it's overkill. And I feel like this is mm. the mistake that the media made in the run up to 2016. And we've learned zero lessons, zero lessons. Drop everything for every time Donald Trump takes a giant crap in a gold toilet and has to flush it 10 or 11 times. Like we we don't need to. I mean, that's a, Remember when he said that? Yes. That toilets were weak and you have to flush them flush 10 or 11 times. times. <laughs> that's what happens when all you eat is well done steak. You just Anyway, um, you think it would have the reverse effect, but we can get into that another time. Yeah, we don't. I don't think he eats any leaves or vegetables. <laughs> no. So, um, but the, I, the thing is, like the wall to wall coverage of something that is historically significant, but on a practical level, has very little. Uh, effect and impact on people's day to day lives. You know, the mayor, ra the mayoral race in Chicago. Yes, it's a local concern, but it has a direct impact on the lives of. Everyone in the Chicago metro area, everybody who goes through Chicago, you know, it's it's a really important thing that the Wisconsin State Supreme Court race, boring, right? Not boring, really important, boring. impacts a ton of people's lives. Donald Trump perp walking to the Manhattan district attorney, you know, to the courthouse or whatever is, you know, important, but not the only story. And that is kind of that that's kind of what bugged me. Well, and it's like the other thing I can't stand. It's like, look, if you want to get like a forensic profiler or someone on television or a body language expert who can be like, here's what I read from his body language, that's fine. If you're a political reporter, I'm not interested in you saying that Donald Trump looks sad. Like stick to what it means. But I don't need all of the uh, flowery nonsense, especially when like tornadoes are ripping through the Midwest, some of the mm -hmm. worst that we've ever seen. Um, like you said, there's just there's so many like really catastrophic yeah, Ron DeSantis bad things. Quiet, yeah. Ron DeSantis quietly signing a law that allows people to right. carry concealed weapons throughout the state of Florida with no permit whatsoever. Um, all right. Is it open carry? You can just wear your actually, you know what? Open. I would prefer I think open carry to me feels more honest because if I see someone with a gun out, I'm like, mm, not going to go over there. But concealed right. carry is a little bit more. But totally anyway, re agree. regardless, there, there are really more – there are a lot more impactful things in the lives on a practical level of, of way more people than Donald Trump being arrested. Especially because he can still run for president and this is probably helping him. <laughs> Like yeah, it absolutely his numbers is. have gone up. His numbers have gone up. Is. He can't get a platform because he's been deplatformed everywhere. But now, I mean, Aaron, I was shooketh 
as Caroline would say, when I watched him on like CNN, like they were carrying his speech last night. And I was like, oh my God, he's fucking back. And I don't know about you, but I have certainly not missed him at all. Yeah, I don't miss him either. And I am, I just, I don't want us to just like fall for this over us. I say like, the national media and the national conversation. It shouldn't just be about him. Like he doesn't have any plans and he's an inept leader and he's a crooked businessman. And that's all you need right. to know. That's all you need to know about and him. And has like, been. It, and has always been. That's his entire career. I can't believe the guy didn't have a criminal record until he just, he's like never, he, he's never like been charged with any. It's like so crazy. No. Well, New York's a different place now. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, Giuliani cleaned that place up. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. What else do we have to talk about? Oh, um, <laughs> so Adam Schiff is running for Senate in California, right? Yes. And uh, a, a stacked field, to be honest. Barbara Lee, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, all three very qualified politicians. Um, I think listeners to this show know that we're more on Team Lee and uh, and Porter than Schiff. But let's yeah. see what he's got. Let's but see he's, what he's great got. too. Yeah, it's just he's personal great too. preference at this point. Personal it's an preference. embarrassment of riches. Exactly. We've got a stacked bench here in California, and for that, I am grateful. Um, but there is going to be a little bit of a dogfight to take over Schiff's uh, congressional seat, and one of the people entering it is uh, Ben Savage, apparently from Boy Meets World. What? Which is, what do you think, Aaron? Why? And again, Caroline, we know that you're for this. Um, <laughs> but this feels like a uh, a why. And when asked why he's running, the answers really go to why. He's like, um, because I've been a union employee. I have worked with people. <laughs> like, it's like, there's hmm. really... Not a lot. I mean, I would be more compelled if he were like, uh, my brother was in a movie with Candace Cameron and killed her in the 90s. I mean, that's almost more compelling to me at this point <laughs> than um, what was the name of that movie? Oh, you're not talking about literally killing. I was like, she's alive. Oh, no, it was a great movie. It was a great movie. I, I literally <gasps> almost missed a final at the University of Vermont because I was white. I was uh, I was watching it. But oh, like, my gosh, this is not. He compared himself to Arnold Schwarzenegger when he's like, celebrities run for office. And look, mm -hmm. he's running as a Democrat. Great. You know, OK. But I just um, I am not I'm not into this one. I, I feel like we need some policy expertise. The world's in crisis. The country's in crisis. I think I just feel like I want someone a little bit more serious. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see what he's got. You know, there's been some crossover from acting to uh successful you know al franken was a great senator i would say yeah um and he, yeah. he started he out being in entertainment different. <laughs> i think yeah he's built a little bit different um i you know here's the thing i think that there's a point in f fame where whatever side of the fence you're on like if you're politically famous you want to be like movie star famous and if you're movie star famous you want to feel important yeah. like a politician and eventually they just kind of like they're so into one type of fame that they're like, I think the other one would be great. Let's just and dip it's our like, toe in the water. Let's see yeah, what that yeah. one feels like. It's, it's like, no, I just don't. Oh, it's like the when, movie was No One Would Tell, by the way. It's oh, okay, terrific. good, good. Please. We'll link to that IMDb page Definitely. in our show notes for sure. <laughs> um, I think that's all we have for news. I mean, things keep happening. There's obviously more news, but that's all we really have time to get deep into. I did want to like give a little shout out Jacinda Ardern and Sana Marin. Both ended their tenures at the heads of their respective Baddest countries. Bitches. They did. They were the like, leader. I've done. They were so honest about it. They're like, I well, came. Santa lost. She lost to a conservative. Her party lost in Finnish elections. But Jacinda was the, was like, I can't I'm do tired. this I'm tired. I've done yeah. enough. There was another. I wish I can't remember it now. There was another female leader who also was like, I've done my part and I'm out. And it's like, you know what? In a country where we have people on their 500th term in Congress, it's refreshing to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm I'm a little bit bummed for Finland because Marin She's was cool. so cool. She's so cool. So she was cool. So, so cool and seems so fun. And Finland joined NATO and she doesn't get to like, you know, party. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope that she is at a nightclub 
you know, the best For nightclub real. in the world. Yeah, having having the Posting best Posting it all on social media as yeah, she deserves po- to do. Post it all, please. Um, okay, cool. Do you have any toasts or roasts this week? No. No, we're like pro-Wisconsin. Great. Yeah, cheers to Wisconsin. Cheers, cheers to uh, the Badger State. Really proud of you and the work that everybody there did and the work that you all continue to do because I feel like we are within – I feel like we were within years, a couple years, of Michigan-ing Wisconsin. Yeah, totally agree. We're they can, close. And you know what? If there are two people who are going to try to help, it's us. Yeah. We love Wisconsin. Both love Wisconsin. 